Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Let's hop right on into it. This video I don't think will take too long because there's really not much to uh, to share or talk about. But as the title of this video suggests, we're going to talk about how I fixed my Gibson Les Paul Customs headstock. Now, as you can see, ah, it's in one piece now, right? But if I flip it over on the back, oh, we see that we have a beautiful headstock crack and somewhat of a interesting, <laughs> we'll say, repair. And I don't think I'm going to uh, shock you with this news right here, but I did this myself. This is not a professional job. <laughs> so, how I did it, uh, it's pretty simple, man. So if you guys are unfamiliar with the story of this guitar, let me just catch you up to speed really, really quick. Basically, long story short, I found this guitar used on reverb, and it was listed with a cracked and repaired headstock. It came to my house, and then when I unboxed it, the headstock repair had uh, separated, and it was broken again. I was incredibly bummed out and, you know, super shocked at the... Uh, the fact that like you know i got a les paul custom because this is my dream guitar and just when it showed up it was busted and i was bummed out and you know all the above right you guys can go check out that video on my channel so i contacted reverb and shout out to reverb they were very gracious with their time it was a little bit of a process but you know they were able to uh work with me nonetheless basically to sum up the whole story i was given a couple options either send it back and get a full refund or Reverb was able to give me a bit of a discount to cover the repairs and cost of if I was to take it to a luthier to get it fixed and or at least cover some of the damage and, you know, cover some of the lost value that this guitar had because now it's had two headstock breaks, right? So basically, as you can tell, I have since kept it and I've already swapped out the bridge pickup with the Steve I Utopia that I uploaded yesterday at the time of this filming. But the main reason why I kept it is because I bought it with a headstock break, right? It's not like it was a brand new guitar and then it snapped in transit. Then I would be incredibly bummed, as I already was bummed enough, right? As you guys saw. But I was like, you know what, man? Let's just try it. Let's just let's just see what happens. I'm going to try to fix it myself. The reason why I wanted to fix it myself is because I felt like I had nothing to lose at this point. You know what I mean? Like, it's already, you know, on its second headstock repair. So, like can't get much worse than this right so long story short i went to lowe's and i got some supplies i got this vice grip of sorts this kind of spring-loaded vice grip and then i also got some tight bond three wood glue so obviously you guys know how the rest of this story goes i just glued the f out of this headstock almost out of spite and out of anger of sorts i was just like dude let's just like if we're gonna do it we're gonna do it so like i just basically glued the sh out of this thing man and just clamped it down with that vice grip and didn't mess with it for 24 hours and then uh kind of cleaned it up as best i could but i almost kind of kept it a little bit crude on purpose just because like i don't know like i said kind of like out of spite you know what i mean like this thing's kind of already becoming a bit of a pain in the butt and it's already kind of becoming my frankenstein of sorts so it's like i don't know i wasn't too focused on making it the cleanest you know repair or anything like that trying to make it look nice and pretty i kind of like how it's a little like I don't know, a little gnarly looking a little bit uh you know it looks like an amateur did it i kind of like that in some regard and honestly if this doesn't hold i got nothing to lose literally nothing to lose i'll just take it to a guy that i know in the local area in the uh glenn mills pennsylvania area and he'll do it so like you know i did this about i don't know what like maybe two three weeks ago i did it while i was on tour while i had a day off and i just kind of just like out of uh I don't know, necessity to try to get the ball rolling on this thing. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to glue it. And I just did it, man. So this guitar has already made an appearance on my channel, like I said, just yesterday with the Utopia Bridge pickup from the Marzio. But long story short, man, this guitar is, it's here to stay and it's mine. And it's, uh, it's got a huge history already behind it. And it's only been with me for what, maybe, maybe a month at the time of this filming. So because this is one of the 70th anniversary commemorative anniversaries of the Gibson Custom Shop, the Les Paul Custom, because it's my literal dream guitar, Silver vs. Les Paul Custom, and because it's got a very checkered past already and I was able to kind of just, you know, uh, <laughs> amateurly put it back together, um, all that encompassing, man, makes me really like kind of make this guitar mine already. It's already got a checkered past and a, a rich past and a rich history already, and it's only been here for about a month, you know what I mean? This may be a little bit out there, but like I feel like I saved this guitar in some regard. And anytime you have the ability to like save or rescue anything in life, whether it's like an animal or, you know, a guitar or whatever, I don't know, like you become a little bit attached to it. So it's a little messed up and it's a little broken, but it's here to stay and it's mine. So all that encompassing, man, yeah, that's how I fixed my headstock. Just glued it like I would... <laughs> Like if I was eight years old, you know what I mean? Doing an art project in elementary school. It wasn't a, it wasn't a scientific, meticulous thing. I just kind of just glued the shit out of it and uh, it works, you know? So last thing I'll say is I've got relatively light gauge strings here on this guitar. I um, 
I never like to have heavy gauge strings to begin with, but um, especially when you have a headstock break, you always kind of want to have a little lighter gauge of strings just so there's not as much tension on the break and the repair. So that's the story with this guitar. I fixed it and I'm pretty stoked, man. It's pretty gnarly, but uh, you know, I haven't put it down ever since I fixed it. So I'm kind of glad I, uh, I made the right choice or I don't know if it's the right choice, but a choice nonetheless. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to my channel, be sure to subscribe on your way out. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Later.